Just an old beat up truck Some say that I should trade up Now that I got some jangle in my pocket But what they don't understand Is it's the miles that make a man I wouldn't trade that thing in for a rocket What they don't know is my dad and me We drove her out to Tennessee She's still here now, he's gone So I hold on It's just an old beat-up box, six rusty strings across the top. It probably don't look like much to you. But these dents and scratches in the wood, yeah, that's what makes it sound so good. To me, it's better than brand new. You see this here flat-top guitar, it's had my back in a million bars, singing every country song. So I hold on. The things I believe in My faith, your love, our freedom To the things I can count on To keep me going strong Yeah, I hold on I go everybody I am so sorry to top stop the happy chatter we are gonna get started however so just a few things Wow there's a lot of you here tonight I'm so glad um, certainly if you'd like you can come sit in any of these chairs it's a casual atmosphere so if you need um, seconds thirds another cookie another water you're just gonna go right ahead and you're gonna get that um, but we are gonna start our meeting I have a pretty full agenda I want it to be worthwhile time tonight um, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. I wanna make sure that you know where the restrooms are, um, right through these doors over here. Um, to my left, your right, are the restrooms. And feel free, if you're in an uncomfortable position for you know, the next 50-ish minutes, um, to come sit here in the chairs. Um, but we are gonna go ahead and get started. I wanna make sure that we start with some thank yous, our CPF ladies. Um, that have hosted us tonight and kind of put together the fun part of the evening. Thank you, CPF ladies. We appreciate you. And I know a lot of you brought um, chili. It smells fab fabulous. Chili, and you brought uh, side items, and you um, helped serve, and you're helping cleaning up. Thank you. This is how we want to do it. This is how, um, th this is our goal as we are striving to kind of rebuild <laughs> our community. Um, we, we wanna meal together, we wanna fellowship together, and then we wanna take some time to just focus on um, some of the ins and outs of our school. That's what this parent night is about. Um, I know you have busy schedules. <laughs> um, there's kids with games and there's all sorts of things going on. Thank you for taking time out tonight. I know it's no small feat. Some of you told me you're here on date night tonight. So I'm sorry. For that that was your choice <laughs> don't blame me 
Uh, <laughs> we, do, we do two parent nights per year at grammar school. You know, we do one in August where we have just a few minutes in here and then we just get you to that classroom. So you can see the teachers, see the environment. And the parent night that we do traditionally second semester in January is here. And we fellowship together, we eat together, and then um, we meet together and kind of in a community building format like this. And you'll notice tonight our theme is, is community building. And I hope that will ring true in the different ways, uh, the different speakers that we have coming to share with you tonight, uh, that mission for the night. So our goal tonight is to go through several areas of business. I have several different um, speakers coming to just update you on the life of our school and talk with you about um, what it means to us tonight to share with you about building community. I want to start with the mission of our school, which the mission of Push Ridge Christian Academy is to teach our students to become like Christ through a classical Christian education within a covenantal community. Our mission is to teach students to become like Christ. It's not to train them to be safe and cozy. It's uh, not to make the way smooth for them. It's not to protect them. It's to train them to become like Christ. And the avenue that we do this in is through a classical Christian education and how that is within uh, a covenantal community. Some years at second semester Paranite, we review what classical education means, or we try to bring forward to you some biblical Christian parenting um, wisdom. Tonight, we're going to talk more about our, the school community part of our mission. I want to just begin with some facts as I update you on uh, the state of our school. Uh, two years ago, January 2020, was when we last met for this event. Um, we chose not to do this event last year. And so two years has brought a lot of change. <laughs> January 2020 was when we were here last for this. And as I think back to that, um, you know, <laughs> so much has occurred clearly in our world, in our community. But here at the school, here are some of the changes in the last two years since we last held this event. Um, our school has added a new uh, program, Developmental Kindergarten, half-day program. We have grown in two years from 164 students in K through 5 to 204 students in DK through 5. We have added a Dean of Student Life. We have two full sections of every grade. We've completed our outdoor classroom project. Uh, last year, we became deficit-free for the first time in our school history. So, um, you know, you probably know that tuition does not cover all of our operating costs. So that's why we do things like annual fund, fundraisers, occasional capital campaigns. Uh, we know that paying tuition is a sacrifice for you. We know that, and um, you're making that sacrifice in order to have your children here. We don't take that lightly. About 80% of our operational costs are actually human resources and facilities. 89% of you all are utilizing the tax credit program to help somehow pay for your tuition. That's a really great number. 89%. Uh, I would encourage you, uh, if you're not in the 89%, to take advantage of how you can receive tax credits to use towards your children's education. Organizations like ACSTO and ALF, uh, ALF is a newer one. Um, I think ALF, like the 80s sitcom, you know. If you're my age or older, which only part of the crowd was laughing. Um, <laughs> thank you for the thumbs up. ALF, and ACSTO are some of the, uh, are the two biggest organizations that we're using um, in our tax credits right now. And um, if, if you don't know what to do or you haven't figured out a way to use the system, please contact Sue Sheridan. Um, she is our scholarship director. She can get you info, get you started. But you know, we also offer tax credit workshops once per quarter. In fact, next Thursday, um, February 3rd at the grammar school, we have a tax credit workshop at 6 p.m. And you can come and you can learn in a small group how to utilize the tax credits in order to help you pay for your um, children's tuition. So I, wa I just wanted you to know that because that's a really, um, really 
amazing benefit that we have in the sta state of Arizona that can help us to be able to afford um, our tuition. Um, as far as facilities here at grammar school, we're squeezed in tight, you've probably noticed this year. Um, good problem to have. We're squeezed in tight. Uh, actually, we're somewhat overflowing into one classroom over here in the church, um, our music classroom. Uh, we have one room left, our school library that we use for basically everything else. It's the kids' library, but it's also our meeting room, professional development, lunch sometimes, um, a space to go to have more room. So we are in talks with how to proceed uh, potential additions that help meet what our current facility need is. Since this year, we're just like not just tight, but a little bit overflowing. Um, for years, we've actually prayed for this. I want you to know. Uh, we've prayed that the Lord would bring families to this school to fill it up. Families that love the Lord, uh, who desire a Christian education for their children, families we can partner with to fulfill our mission. So we give the glory to the Lord for filling us up. Um, of course, our greatest, and uh, it's, it is no secret, our greatest asset at the school is our teachers and staff. I just don't think there could be a finer group of, makes me tear up, a finer group of servants than the faculty and staff at Push Ridge Grammar School. <clears throat> we have office staff members that I would say the right words are relentlessly and cheerfully <laughs> serve uh, in the front office. They fill in for each other. They problem solve. We call it the problem de jour because there's always a problem de jour. They're helping a bleeding kid. They're answering the phone. Um, they are, you know, inside jokes with each other, uh, helping you with questions, and they really care for your kids and for our school. Uh, they've carried on well during this pandemic. We have teachers that want to teach here. Uh, they love the Lord, they love teaching, and they really like each other. It's pretty fun to watch. There's high camaraderie um, amongst our faculty. They're friends. Uh, they carry each other's burdens. They, they laugh together about the things that your kids say. <laughs> they, they brainstorm together creative ways to help so-and-so to learn better or um, you know, ideas for their classroom or for curriculum. They really sharpen each other um, back and forth. They, they're so patient. They help your kids with the arguments that they're getting into with other kids. And they help, they're in, interested in the habits that they're developing. Um, they know when it's time to play. They know when it's time to buckle down. They correct them. They let them struggle, but they encourage them. Um, they are not perfect, of course by any means, but goodness gracious, our teachers um, sure do love trying. And so I would love to clap one more time for our faculty and staff. We've added many new families the last two years. A lot of you uh, are new within that time. Since, since two years ago, we have been forced to either cancel or modify many of our regular school events. Um, if you have been in our school just for two years or less, then a lot of the school life traditions that have been happening this year are new to you. And that is a large group of you. As you know, we've been trying our best to press on as normally this year as possible uh, for the sake of being together as a community, fulfilling our mission. And uh, many of you have done the exact same thing in your professions. And I know that it is hard sometimes at 7.15 in the morning to figure out, is this kid too sick for school? <laughs> because I used to just send him. You'll be fine. But you have done such a good job of keeping them home. <laughs> and that's why we can keep going. And I know it's not easy. I'm right there with you. I, have the, I do the same thing at 7 o'clock in the morning. So um, thank you for pressing on and for doing your very best to keep the, um, the school as healthy as possible and to be watching over your kids. Tonight's theme of building community just all the more resonates since we haven't had this event for a couple of years. And I do want to make sure that you're connected, um, that you feel like you're in the know with the school um, so that you can be reminded how important your investment is in your child's grammar school years. So, so let's get practical here for just a moment. Um, the very best way to stay connected and stay on top of things is to check your email from the school. Every Sunday at 9.15 a.m., comes um, to your inbox uh, the week at a glance. 
And every weekend, maybe might be by Monday afternoon, you get your teacher newsletter. These two emails are really going to help you stay connected. Um, it's through the Week at a Glance that we post needs for volunteers, um, uh, opportunities, sign-up links for things. Right now it's re-enrollment time, so when you get on to Lion's Den and you update things, phone numbers, email addresses, whatever you put into that database is what we use to contact you. So if you, if you want both your, both your emails in there or just the one or all 10 of your email addresses so that you get all the... <laughs> Put it in there. That's what we'll use. So just a, a reminder, um, right now in the week at a glance, it's, uh, we've had wonderful success with y'all signing up to serve hot lunch. Thank you so much. There's a sign up link right in the week at a glance. You know, hot lunch is a CPF run thing. It's, it's not run by the school and it's all volunteer. And they've moved to five days a week this quarter. And it, they can do that because you all are signing up to volunteer. And we ask that you would please, if you sign up to utilize hot lunch for your kids, not just sign up, but also pay, um, we ask that you come and volunteer um, two times per quarter in the kitchen serving lunch. And that link comes out in the Week at a Glance. Um, also in the Week at a Glance, you note things like, Mrs. Hesse and I just started a Friday morning, 8.30 to 9.30, Mom's Encouragement and Prayer. Come anytime. Come once come every week, but we want to be able to uh, spend time, a few minutes in the Word together, meditating on the Word, sharing prayer requests, and we pray for each other and for the school. So I want to make sure moms know that that's happening every single Friday in the library, 8.30 to 9.30, so that you can come by sometimes. Um, I want to go over, as well, uh, some upcoming events here uh, for the spring semester because certainly we did uh, we are now doing most of our events save one or two and so here's what's what's happening we'll start February is next week it's next week so uh, we're gonna start open house uh, time February Fridays you've probably seen that published and so anyone that's interested in the school they do need to sign up with Casey Robinson and we do open houses for two hours 9 to 11 on Fridays um, called February Fridays, so let your friends know they can sign up with Casey if they'd like a tour. Um, we also, with your kids, are going to get to celebrate Love of Reading Month in February, which is fun. Some traditions you'll hear probably from the kids. The whole school stopped and did deer drop everything and read for 15 minutes. Even Mr. Siri, even Miss Rhodes. So little fun things like that we'll be doing in, in February. Um, we, we round the corner into March, and you'll be meeting again with your child's teacher um, live parent-teacher conferences in March. And then as we head into April and May, um, that is our Shakespeare Festival and our annual fundraiser, which this year is a golf tournament. And that is being held in May. And so uh, we would, we're going to be sending out things for you all to somehow get involved uh, in those things. If you're new, you may not know this, but if you're returning, you may recall that when, when you're part of this community, you're asked to help make us better by serving or supporting in all of these four major categories. We call them the, the um, fourfold commitment. And I've broken them down to two C's and two S's. Classroom support is when you can, come volunteer in the class. Uh, come to reading groups, drive on a field trip, um, send in something the teacher is asking for that she needs. Um, come in and see if there's anything she needs done, binding, laminating, copying. We are, we are actually right now almost finished staffing our library with volunteers to come read to the kids and help them check out books. If you're interested in doing that, I need two Wednesday volunteers per month from about 12 to 2, and then Mondays from 12.30 to 2. Michelle Herzog is going to take names um, for those. Covenant Parent Fellowship, when you um, sign up to uh, be a part of our school, you also sign up to pitch in to help them. You can do that by serving hot lunch. You can do that by um, helping serve during Teacher Appreciation Week. You can do that by um, standing on the curb in the mornings and opening car doors to greet the kids. Um, you can help with the fall barbecue that they put on uh, for our school to, to bless the school. The school annual fundraiser each year, um, it's different. We, we will do sometimes a spring dinner. Like I said, this year is a golf tournament that we are hosting in, in May. You can be on logistics team. You can come to the golf tournament, you can serve at the golf tournament, you can um, sponsor a table, you can buy a ticket, you can help with the shopping. And lastly, Shakespeare Festival, um, come to it, sign up to help, tear down, build, build a piece of set, donate goods, 
um, help put together the stage, clean up after the event is over. Um, the Shakespeare Festival is staff overseen, but it's parent volunteers that uh, pull it off. As most of you know, we do a Shakespeare Festival um, every year. It's part of the um, deep, rich tradition of our school. Every grade learns a little something different um, about, about Shakespeare or his plays, his times, his moral lessons for us. Um, and then we culminate our studies in May with the Shakespeare Festival. Uh, it's always the first Friday in May. We actually um, try to stay focused. There's many things that we could do, but we try to stay primarily focused on these things. Uh, the mission of the Push Ridge Grammar School Shakespeare Festival is to enrich the imagination of all ages by experiencing Shakespeare's culture and times, his rich language, complex stories, timeless moral truths, and performing his works. So here's some uh, brief glimpses of the highlights of the festival that I want to show you just through picture form. Um, we have uh, just a few pictures. If this is new for you, um, we do begin in kindergarten, and our younger grades are doing simple songs. Um, the, the maypole is what begins the festival with the kinders around the maypole. Of course, um, our, our first and second grades uh, begin to do a little bit longer songs and skits. And as they go right on up the ages, they begin studying a little bit more about Shakespeare, his Globe Theater. Um, the second graders uh, have their traditional Shakespeare for all time. And as the kiddos get older, you can see the costumes are coming in. You see the set here on the grass. The Shakespeare Festival takes place on the grassy lawn over at the school every year. And so by the time the kids are older, um, they are doing short abridgments of plays so that by fifth grade, it's their time. The rite of passage, the full stage play, makeup, lights, microphones on your face. It's really cool. <laughs> and so we all pitch in. The focus is the student performances. And um, that's what we like to say, but parents pitch in to pull this thing off. And um, let me tell you, uh, the kids get excited when they see you helping. So it's really important that the parents uh, pitch in to make it happen. It just brings this message, this is important. Uh, it's a family thing. Uh, it takes everyone to buy in and to do it, but there's a great sense of accomplishment when it's pulled off well. And we have a lot of people that have um, gotten plugged in and met some friends, some comrades, some fellow dads even when they've assembled the stage on the grass. Um, so we buy in, we pitch in, and then we cheer them on. That's what we do. So we're gearing up for this year, and we can use some help. You'll, you're going to see some communication coming out, um, some help to get that ready. Now, just to be clear, um, if you have a fifth grader, then it's tradition that you are all in for the fifth grade play. And so your communication are going to come from the fifth grade teachers, those emails, how you can help out. If you have a first through fourth grader, um, that is the festival, and that's on the grass at the school, and you are going to help set up the festival, contribute to it, cheer it on, and tear it down. If you're brand new and if you're in ki a kinder parent, um, plug into a team. Get to know some people. It's a great way to get uh, plugged in. Speaking of what we do. Uh, I want to transition to an annual segment that we do on Parent Night um, in, in January, why we do what we do, I like to call it. And the focus is typically one aspect of our school that uh, is focused on a school practice of our curriculum or a moment about thinking about why we do something here at our school. Past segments have included topics like recitations, Latin, Shakespeare, classical education. Um, by way of introduction to this segment, I like to remind you that um, you are the primary educator of your child. And so as we raise our kids, we, we send them to school, we go to church together as a family. Um, we like to remember the analogy of a three-legged stool. So go with me in your mind to the three-legged stool. The, the three legs work together to support um, and raise the child. So the three-legged stool is home, school, and church. And, and with these group, three groups, we're supporting the child in his raising. Now, the, the school is not the home. The school is not the church. 
but it's these three together um, that we want, and ideally those three are like-minded approaches to be effective in raising the child's, the children uh, for Christ. That's why we want our families plugged in and attending church regularly um, so that they're being nurtured and spiritually fed. This will grow you and your family. Um, that being said, at our school, we place a high value in the training of habits godly and virtuous habits at our school. You've probably seen some of our posters around. And uh, most of you know by now, Mrs. Hesse, our Dean of Student Life, she has been growing in this role this year, um, working with the kids uh, spiritually, behaviorally, emotionally, and she was prepared to be here tonight in person uh, to speak to you for just a few minutes. But last week, a close extended family member passed away, and she flew to Texas today um, to be at the memorial, which is in the morning. And so she recorded this yesterday for us. Um, so I'd like for you to tune in now. I've got it right here, Dan. Tune in now to uh, Mrs. Hesse in a segment called Why We Do What We Do. Good evening, and thank you again for your time tonight. My name is Rachel Hesse, and I am the Dean of Student Life at the Grammar School. Tonight, I would like to talk to you a little bit about why we do what we do at Push Ridge Christian Academy. But first, I would like to apologize to you all for not being with you in person. As you are watching this video, I will have just landed in Texas to join the rest of my family as we celebrate the life of my sweet aunt. She went home to be with the Lord last week. Miss Rhodes gave me her full support to miss tonight's event so that I may attend her funeral tomorrow morning. Thank you, Miss Rhodes, I truly appreciate you. This evening, I would like to talk to you about habits. Think about some of your habits from your morning routine to the end of the day. We do so many things every day without even thinking because they are ordinary patterns that we repeat over and over. What are the habits of your life doing to you? Do they only affect you or those around you? I don't make New Year's resolutions, but I do ask the Lord to show me areas in my life that I need to change or areas in my family's life that we need to change for the coming year. As I was praying about this and thoroughly enjoying that third week off of our Christmas break, I listened to two different podcasts on habits. Then my pastor, who sends out a weekly email, he has a section labeled Culture and Christ, which includes an article that helps guide Christians and helps us to respond to what is happening in our world and just to be biblically informed of all of these events, had an article from the very author who I was listening to on this podcast. And I thought, okay, Lord, I hear you, habits. I need to check my habits, got it. The author is Justin Whitmill Early, and he was speaking about his second book, Habits of the Household, Practicing the Story of God in Everyday Family Rhythms. I took this with me to read on my flight. He says that ordinary habits create extraordinary liturgies that are leading our hearts to places that change who we are. You will become a different person by living like a different person. We're being converted by habit, and our heart will always follow our habit, not our mind or our good intentions. He goes on to say that in our culture, America has a rule of life for us that is invisible. He suggests the strongest currents that are forming us today are technology, busyness, and ambition. So this got me thinking about the habits that we strive to instill in our culture at the grammar school. In every classroom, there are three habits of the heart that are displayed with their definition and with a scripture reference. Teachers refer to these three habits throughout the year in hopes that attentiveness and responsibility and respect will make an imprint in your child's head, heart, and habit. Being attentive is with mind and body, focused on the task at hand. Proverbs 4, 20 through 22 says, My son, be attentive to my words, incline your ear to my saying, let them not escape from your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and healing to all their flesh. Being respectful is honoring others with our actions, attitudes, and words. 1 Peter 2, 17 says, Honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. This is the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Being responsible is making the right choice even when no one is watching. Proverbs 20, 11 says, Even a child makes himself known by his acts, by whether his conduct is pure and upright. We are in the business of habit formation, which is shaping the affections of what our children love. 
British educator Charlotte Mason said, nine out of 10 things that we do in life are out of habit. We can't opt out of habits. It's not like we can just turn them off and on. When students aren't in the habit of putting their things away at home, guess what's at the top of their desk looks like? Nothing is put away. When students aren't in the habit of cleaning up after themselves when they are eating, guess who gets called back to the lunch tables to clean up their mess? When a student isn't in the habit of making a wrong right, guess who struggles the most at apologizing and accepting a consequence? At our back to school night in August, I spoke about how we teach our students to obey the first time, all the time with a cheerful heart. It takes every adult at school to repeat this phrase for the entire first semester and hold every student accountable until they finally do it. It's still a work in progress. However, I will tell you that when I speak with a student who has disobeyed and I ask them, what should you have done? They almost always will tell me, I should have obeyed the first time because they know in their head what they should do, but their habit tells them to do differently and the heart will always follow the habit. And so it becomes easier for a child to be disobedient everywhere they go, the soccer field, the birthday party, the restaurant, at home. Is this happening in your home? Are your children obeying the first time all the time without grumbling or complaining? Is there delayed obedience? Do they obey, but after you've asked them three or four times? Think about when you tell your child it's time to sit down and start their homework, or it's time for them to get in the shower. What usually happens at this time? Hmm, you're thinking about it, aren't you? Is this the time that you enjoy? Is it easy or is it a fight every night? It would be a complete disaster if 16 students argued back with the teacher, with the teacher for everything that they were asked of. Nothing productive would happen. And you have those students who will obey, but on their own time. That's called delayed obedience. They're just living on island time, y'all. This, this too is difficult for the teacher and for the other students in the class as they are waiting to move on or waiting for this student to do what was asked of them. Part of good classroom management is training our students to follow the expectations so that goals can be accomplished quickly and effectively. And the same is true for good home management. Remember parents, you are the primary educators of these things with your children. You've got this. At the grammar school, we aim to instill the habit of recitation and narrations, the habit of memorizing scripture, the habit of neat handwriting, the habit of reading good literature, the habit of not interrupting, the habit of always allowing others to go first, the habit of finding the good, the beautiful, and the true in everything. You see, the habit of obeying isn't just for school. The habit of spending time with God isn't just on Sunday mornings at church. The habit of eating together as a family isn't just at Thanksgiving or Christmas or a birthday. Justin Early said that changes cannot happen without accountability. He says, focus on one small change and other big changes begin to happen because it's the small things that have the largest magnitude of difference in our lives. As you know, it is not easy to, have, to change a habit or to instill a new one, but don't give up. Some days will be easier than others. One child will pick it up easier than another. Don't give up on that child that is harder. It will be easy to continue living in your current patterns. Yes, that is true. But if you press on, it does become easier and you will have formed a lasting habit in your child. Your habits don't affect your schedule. They're also affecting your heart. Like the three habits of the heart. Remember, they are attentiveness, responsibility, and respect. We hope that you will instill them in your home so that the head, heart, and habit become aligned. So my challenge to you tonight, before the first month of the year leaves us, is this. Ask the Lord to reveal a habit in you that you need to change or in your home. Ask your spouse or a friend to hold you accountable. Instead of getting on your phone first thing in the morning to check the weather, social media, text messages, get on your phone first thing in the morning and turn on your Bible app. Make one night out of the week where you sit down together as a family. Life is busy and we all have activities, so one night out of the week is not too much to ask for. Make it happen. When thinking about future plans and goals for your children, do not worry and research where he's going to college and what degrees are offered there and how can he make a good living in this career. 
Instead, I should be researching what churches are in that area and how will he become involved with other Christians on his campus to grow his faith that are his age. I think that last one was just for me. I'll leave you with one last thing tonight that Justin Early said that really stuck with me. And he said that your habits will not change God's love for you, but God's love for you should change your habits. Thank you. I'll tell her you clapped. <laughs> um. This is the first year you've been exclusively an upper school parent, Mr. Van and Brandon, ever. Uh, so we, we know that your time at Grammar was long, dedicated, and rich. Um, but what a steadfast, humble, persistent, hardworking school board chair you have been, particularly during such a time as this. Uh, please help me welcome our school board chair, Mr. Todd Van and Brandon. Good evening. Uh, yeah, 11 straight years at the grammar school. Um, this year is pretty tough to pull ourselves away, quite honestly. We love this place. Um, to this day, our, our people, our circles, our people that we met and grew up with and parented with at the grammar school. Uh, they're still at the upper school. I don't mean to scare you away from the upper school. It's amazing. It's just different. Um, but <clears throat> very happy to be here with you tonight. Before I go any further, though, uh, Marissa Stone asked me to plug the parenting conference that is at this church, March 4th and 5th. It's a Friday and Saturday, I believe. Marissa, where'd she go? She's not here anymore. Um, you can find information at cfcpca.org. Uh, great uh, program, and um, please uh, take check it out. So uh, glad to be with here, you here tonight. I'm here on behalf of the school board, even though I am a dad. I have a sixth grader and a sophomore. Um, the school board this year is made up of 14 men and women who love the Lord and love PRCA. Uh, we're a board that's dedicated to PRCA's mission. We love and respect one another, and we're closely aligned in our desire to strengthen PRCA and, its, and advance its mission. The board is primarily tasked with ensuring that mission is advanced, and you've heard it many, many times so far, uh, probably more times than you can count, but here it is again. Our mission is to teach our students to become like Christ through a classical Christian education within a covenantal community. When you choose to send your children to Push Ridge, you're choosing this mission because it is what connects everything. When you choose a Christian education, you put Christ at the core of everything. When you choose a classical education, you recognize that truth, goodness, and beauty are neither relative nor subjective. And when you choose to be a part of a covenantal community, you choose to love those around you. One of the questions that's frequently discussed in PRCA circles is, what does it mean to be covenantal? And for us, it means that the school, the church, and the home Sound familiar? Partner together to raise a child in the way he should go. But it's really more than a partnership. <clears throat> As Christians, we are joined to one another through Christ. A covenantal relationship means that just as Christ has committed himself to us, we commit ourselves to him and to one another. In the case of this school, we commit ourselves to assisting believing parents to bring up their children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Covenantal families commit themselves to support and encourage the school in its efforts. And together, we commit ourselves and our students to loving and serving Jesus Christ. Now, building a covenantal community is a process. It involves consistently growing, learning, changing, airing, reconciling, etc. So the next logical question that typically comes up is, what are the marks of a covenantal community? Well, it's difficult, perhaps impossible, to explicitly define every mark of a covenantal community. There are several that come to mind from Scripture. The primary mark is pretty simple. Love. When Jesus said in John 13, a new command I give you, Love one another. 
As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. If our mission matters, and we're truly teaching our students to become like Christ, then this commandment is the starting point for covenantal community. Jesus loved. He even loved the people who hated and disagreed with him. And mind you, he was right about everything. Honestly, I struggle to love people who disagree with me on things that I still may be proven wrong on. If we take this further, I kind of have a, my own list of general comparisons and marks of a covenantal versus a non-covenantal community. Now, this is not an exhaustive list, nor is it divinely inspired. Uh, it's not specifically endorsed or adopted by an organization, denomination, etc. This is kind of TVB's outlook on covenantal, non-covenantal. So bear with me. Uh, these are just kind of observations and thoughts from Scripture about covenantal community and what it looks like. Um, and as it pertains to the non-covenantal components here, uh, I do speak from a position of unique authority because I've made all of these mistakes many times in the past and probably will again. You can call me something of an expert on non-covenantal uh, community because I'm a sinner. So first, <clears throat> covenantal community talks with people. We look at Isaiah 118 and it says, come, let us reason together. Non-covenantal community, on the other hand, talks about people. Covenantal community speaks the truth in love, Ephesians 4.15. Non-covenantal community speaks the truth in anger. Covenantal community seeks to understand it's long-tempered. If we look at James 1.19, it says, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Non-covenantal community seeks first to be understood and is short-tempered. Covenantal community exalts Jesus Christ in all things. We see that in Philippians 2.9. Non-covenantal community exalts someone or something other than Jesus Christ. Covenantal community, with Ephesians 4.25, we see we are members of one another. Non-covenantal community celebrates rugged individualists. Covenantal community, in Galatians 6.2, Bearing one another's burdens. Non-covenantal community. Every man for himself. You know, those last two are especially challenging in the world we live in. Uh, because we have a tendency to celebrate the rugged individualist. The every man for himself. The self-made man or the self-made woman. Um, in my time, I don't know a single person out there that is doing it well who's doing it alone. That's why we have community. Covenantal community also talks about accountability. We see this in Romans 14. Non-covenantal community is about accusation. And the last one I have, covenantal community chooses to love one another in spite of differences and disagreements. We see that in 1 Corinthians 13 when it says that love always perseveres, bears all things, and endures all things. Non-covenantal community requires agreement in order to love one another. Now, ultimately, acting covenantally is a choice. You're here tonight. You're choosing to be in this community and to act covenantally. Oftentimes, it's an intentional decision because our own sin nature pulls us in the opposite direction. Uh, oftentimes, the real test of covenantal commitment comes when we have a question about a choice someone else has made, or we find ourselves frustrated over what we believe another person considers true and good. Being in a covenantal community doesn't mean we won't have disagreements. Uh, it means that when we do, we address them differently or properly. When conflicts or disagreements occur, a covenantal community will talk with the other person. If we're not able to talk with them, we really need to let it go. When something elicits a strong emotion within us, but we cannot find a way to lovingly talk about it, then we need to dismiss it rather than letting it turn into slander or gossip, which just damages the community. <clears throat> I will admit this is really, really hard, but it's also the loving thing to do. It's the loving thing to talk with someone about something with which you don't understand or agree. We do this all the time in our own families. Um, I've been married for 20 years, and I have a 15-year-old daughter and a 12-year-old son 
So this happens a lot in my house. Uh, we do this because we love each other and we know that love is the foundation of the relationship, not agreement. And that is a very important thing to know when you have a 15-year-old daughter. God bless her, I love her. Disagreements are part of our lives. We're allowed to disagree with each other. In fact, we should expect it. But as we have disagreements, let's remember the very wise words, in essentials, unity, in non-essentials, liberty, in all things, charity. Now, there's some debate about who said this. It's either Augustine of Hippo or Rubertus Melendius. Mrs. Noller and I were having this debate earlier. Um, I'm guessing many of you, like me, have never heard of Brother Rubertus, so I'm going to go with Augustine on this one. Uh, but who said it is far less important than what was said? Uh, and a quick clarification on this statement, I've heard it get a little bit confused because some people will bring their own definition of charity. I'll go, okay, charity, sure, I'll give my time and money, what's next? Uh, but when you look at this in Latin, the way it's written, the word that's used is caritas. A lot of you are familiar with that word or that organization. Um, and that word is more properly translated as love for all or love for humankind. So consider the statement a little differently. In essentials, unity. In non-essentials, liberty. In all things, love. Everything is not meant to be in the category of essentials. If it were, he could have just shortened it and said unity in all things and been done with it. But he didn't. He gave us two distinct categories and one very strong reminder from John 13, love. As we pursue covenantal community together, let's lead with Christ's commandment to love. That will be the purest form of covenantal community. Uh, it's now my pleasure and honor to introduce our headmasters. Um, yes, you heard that properly. Um, I use the plural. Not many schools can claim a duo of headmasters or an office of headmasters, so to speak, but we can. Uh, we like to say that there's so much happening at Push Ridge right now that we need both a headmaster and a deputy. Uh, <laughs> all kidding aside, though, many of you know that uh, Alan Cooney resigned back in the fall. He served us with excellence for many years, and he left Push Ridge better than he found it. Uh, for those of you who know and love Alan, he's doing great. Um, I speak with confidence on this because I, I talk to him a lot. I see him a lot. Uh, he's actually going to be getting back into pastoring, which is a, a wonderful thing. But his first love will always be educating and teaching. Um, so we have a very big task of finding the next headmaster for Push Ridge. Uh, and that eff effort actually officially starts this week as the headmaster search committee kicks off. Uh, we're not going to rush the process. We are looking for the right person to lead PRCA. And we know it's not the search committee that will find or deliver the candidate to lead our school, but it's the Lord Almighty who will deliver the candidate to lead his school. But in the absence of a headmaster, we have been blessed beyond measure to be joined by Jerry Bowen as our interim headmaster and Eric Dowdle as our deputy interim headmaster. Uh, Jerry recently retired from a long and distinguished career in education. Uh, most recently as regional director for ACSI, which is one of our accreditation organizations. And he decided that retirement was boring. <laughs> no, he didn't. Uh, he did not think that at all. In fact, I know he's looking back forward to getting back to retirement at some point. Um, but he has answered the call of this school, and more precisely, the call of the Lord to serve where he is needed. Um, we are so grateful for his obedience to that call. Um, and Mr. Dowdle, Eric, also has a pretty extensive back record in Christian education. He was the principal of Casas Christian School for many years. Uh, Jerry asked him to be a part of this effort to ensure the PRCA admin team always had someone they could go to when things took Jerry away from town. Um, he has commitments that he's made prior to uh, committing to us not the least of which was the arrival of a grandchild just a few weeks ago, and he just got back from, from that. Uh, so Eric came on as our interim headmaster. Uh, these two gentlemen truly hit the ground running um, and have made a great impact in a short time. I thank God for them every day, so please join me in welcoming at least half of the duo, Jerry Bowen. Uh, 
And Jerry takes no responsibility for the chili conclusion. I'm just telling you that right up front. I did taste them, I did judge, and if you lose, I'm sorry. I have my preferences. You know, it's interesting, uh, you go through your life and you think you know your name and then you realize that you don't know your name. I saw some of you a month or so ago at, at the wonderful meeting and some of you were not there. But those that were there discovered that I thought my name was Jerry. It turns out my name is Jerry Bowen. And uh, apparently I had no last name, I just have a name, Jerry Bowen. So I've kind of learned to adapt to being just a one-name person. I'm kind of like a rock star now. It's pretty cool. But uh, as Todd said, um, I thought I was retired. You know how it goes. God calls, and you get to change your thinking. And uh, it was a real joy to be able to step in and come to the call of the board who said, could you come and help us? And that really was the ask, and the Holy Spirit said, you need to do that. I didn't give you all those tools so you could go home and just play around and do nothing. All those skills you've got, you need to use them. And so here I am. By the way, I too thought this was date night, uh, which is why my wife is not here with me, because she had different thoughts that this is not date night. So you go, and there you go. And by the way, Todd, if you think talking to a 16-year-old daughter is fun, wait till they're 45. <laughs> it's a real delight in terms of uh, how they can instruct you in your ways. Not to mention your, what you should and should not wear, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, I, I, just, I just want you all to know, you know that <clears throat> of the decades I spent working with Christian schools, each one of them was a pleasure. It was a great joy, but that doesn't mean they were trouble-free. And unfortunately, I, th I think the beauty of time and age is you begin to realize trouble is not really the trouble we think it is. It's in God's economy. It's opportunities, opportunity to grow, opportunity to be challenged, opportunity to submit to his hand and let him have his way. And so when God called to come and come alongside the school, I thought it was a wonderful opportunity. And I was able to convince the board I could come part-time. Uh, my wife asked me just last week, she goes, so how's the part-time going? I said, I, you know, I think I'm only doing about 60 hours a week. That's pretty good compared to the 70 hours prior to that, prior to retirement. But you know, it's, she said, well, what are you doing? I said, you know what I'm doing? I'm having fun. It's awesome. And so it's a real, I want you to realize it's a great joy to come and serve you and serve the board and serve the students and serve the leaders. It's great to be here to help. And that is a, that's just a wonderful thing. Um, but I, I just want you to realize the, the other thing that I bring to the table is seeing a lot of schools and seeing a lot of stuff. You know, the good news is God is always at work. Always at work. And when we think things are like fuzzy and weird, like we're going to have a pandemic and we're going to go out of business. No, you're not. As a matter of fact, you're not only going to not go out of business, there are going to be so many people lining up at your door, you won't have room for them. And you think you're going to have 100 or 200 people come to an open invitation to see what the school's about, you're going to have 500. It really is Jesus telling the disciples, hey, throw your nets over here. And they're like, you don't understand. At the end of the day, it doesn't work that way. He goes, no, throw them. And when they did, with obedience... God provided abundantly above what they could ever imagine. And that's what's happening here at PUSH is God is providing. And you're part of that provision, but there are hundreds waiting in the wings to come to this place. Now, is that not a wonderful testimony of what God is doing? A amen? So I got I to tell you, it's an exciting time, and Eric and I are extremely excited to uh, be here. And, and I just want you to realize that. I mean, you're probably thinking, oh, great, now I can go and talk to that guy. Well, actually, probably not because... As Todd said, I'll be here and there and, and everywhere because I had prior commitments. But Eric's going to be here. <laughs> and I'll uh, share his email with you so you can contact him. <laughs> so I, I would like you to hear from Mr. Doddle. So Eric, come on up. Um, here he comes. This is, I got to tell you, this is one of the best gigs in the world is you get to be like the, the big cheese and get all the... It's limelight, and then when there's trouble, you can say, well, let's have the deputy step up, shall we? So, Eric, come on up. Thank you, Mr. Bowen. It's so good to be here tonight. So good to see your faces. Does it feel good to come into a community and be together again and see friends again and kind of feel, feel together again? I hope so. Uh, it's a wonderful, fresh start that's going on. Uh, grateful to be at Push Ridge Christian Academy. Um, as Mr. Bowen put it, it's been fun every day. 
just to experience what God is doing here at Push Ridge, what he's established here at Push Ridge, at the grammar school, um, seeing your children, having them greet you, um, and then walking onto the upper school campus and having a young man who's three feet taller than you greet you and open the door for you. You know, There's a sweet community that is here that uh, not only has God established, but he's established through you. He's established through these amazing teachers. You walk down the halls and you get to see them investing in their students informally. You, their doors are open, uh, especially around here. I get to walk into classrooms and see uh, these teachers just uh, pouring their hearts out. How many of you have seen that? Teachers just pouring their hearts out uh, for their children, uh, really attending to the details and attending to not only the curriculum, but teaching to the whole child here in this Christian covenant classical environment, right? Grateful for it. Um, one thing that uh, we are working on that I just wanted to mention briefly, because I'll be brief, because I've been told I need to be brief, is uh, we are, Push Ridge is establishing a third campus uh, down on 12th and Valencia. I just came from there. Uh, meeting with families, learning about the school there. It's a wonderful opportunity uh, for Push Ridge to establish a Christian school in an area of town where there just aren't many at all. And uh, it's really been neat to see God confirming that commitment that our board has made, staff have made, uh, to this new school campus uh, on 12th and Valencia. Um, how many of you have been to the campus uh, down there? Outstanding. It's under renovation right now. We want to have some open houses down there here in the spring and, and invite everyone from our community to see that. It's a fledgling campus. It's going to have kindergartners and first graders. And our staff here at the grammar school have been instrumental so far and will continue to be to, to really support that school. But I want to ease some minds. Some folks have, have uh, had the question, a legitimate question, uh, are resources from push the current schools being given to that school to get it started? And the answer is uh, really no. Uh, that campus, the operational costs will be covered by those families there and, and the, those expenses will be uh, covered by uh, that budget that's certainly down there. Uh, God's been confirming uh, this, this project at the, at the South Campus um, with just unsolicited donations. It's just really been a very sweet uh, thing to just learn of individuals who, who, who simply say, you know what, God just really is impressed on me uh, to give to this. And so uh, no matter that amount, we've just been really grateful and grateful to God uh, for that confirmation of, of what he's doing there. So I want to encourage you. I'd like to, to pray for it. Uh, we're recruiting families. And so I'd love for you to pray uh, that God uh, does that very neat work as he's doing here and on our other campuses. So may I just pray with you? I know we've got another prayer coming up, but I love to pray. So may I just pray with you and for you uh, in this, this school year and certainly in your role as a parent, that parenting seminar. I don't know what Kettling Foothills Church does, but it's famous for its parenting seminar. So I would just really encourage you to, to sign up for that. But let me just pray real quickly, and then I'll invite Mandy Mrs. Rose to come back up. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for these families. We thank you for what you've established here at the grammar school, what you've established uh, here at Push Ridge Christian Academy. We thank you for our board. We thank you for Todd. We thank you for his leadership. Father, we thank you for your purposes uh, that you make evident every single day in this Christian covenantal classical community, Lord, that you've established and you love. I pray a special blessing on these families. Lord, we thank you for uh, making it possible that they can be here and that we could be here together tonight, celebrating, celebrating what you're doing here, but also celebrating you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Uh, I'm humbled to learn uh, from these giants. Truly am. Um, God's good. I want to um, wrap up the evening. And uh, if you have kids over in uh, child care, they're waiting for you. And uh, guess what? When you enter Chile into the contest, there's a winner. And at this school, there is one winner. <laughs> um, and I've been told, <laughs> I've been told who that winner is. Do we have the prize coming? Because that's my big... 
Oh, and second and third. Okay, I know um, the winner. I was told that one. And it's chili number one, Jill McKenna. Right? Come on down. You're the chili winner. Chili number two was second place. Do we know the name? We don't know the chili name of chili number two. Chili number two. Was it you? Chris and Sandy? Chris and Sandy. It was Chris. Chris, Chris is chili. Chili number two. Good job. And chili number three was number eight. Chili number three. Sorry. Oh, so many numbers. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, third place is chili eight. Who are you, chili eight? White bean. There's a white bean. There we have. Who is that? Good job. Thank you so much. Thank you for bringing food. Thank you, you guys. Um, I just want to make sure we say thank you to CPF Leadership again. They brought the fun. I brought the business. They brought the fun. So thank you, CPF ladies, for hosting tonight. Um, we're going to close. Child care does close at about 7.45, 7.50 at the latest. So if you have kiddos, if you could um, get them picked up. And we do not have church custodians tonight. And so I'm going to ask if you're able to stay for 10 minutes. A few of you signed up. If you're able to stay for 10 minutes, we have chapel in here in 11 hours. Nope, nope, nope. Let's make it 12. 12 hours. And so uh, back at the double doors, you see uh, Michaela Robinson in the purple and Michelle Herzog. If you could report to them if you have 10 minutes, we have to actually clear all the tables and um, set the chairs for your kids for chapel tomorrow. We would really appreciate that since we don't have custodians tonight. Again, we pitch in together. That's what we do. Um, so uh, thank you once again. Make sure you get your leftovers. If you brought chili, please take those things home as part of our cleanup. And let me close us in prayer and send us on our way. Lord, I thank you for this evening. Thank you um, for, for um, allowing us to gather together. Lord, thank you for the school. Thank you for your provision. Uh, we continue to give this school unto your keeping. Help us, Lord, to honor you with it in word and deed. And now go with these families as they go home and get some rest. In your name we pray. Amen. Good night.